Okay, so I'm going to show you um, the constrictor knot, which was recently um, mentioned in the Vet Times, and it's one of the most secure knots you can use. I've recently started using it on my um, ovarian pedicles for um, bitch spays, and I find it brilliant, so I just wanted to share um, how I place it. Um, I do it a little bit differently to how they've shown um, diagrammatically this knot uh, in the Vet Times article, partly because I don't feel comfortable um, transecting anything before I've got a knot on. Um, and I find it works really well for me this way. Um, so here goes. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've got this piece of fabric. Um, it's just an old hem from a dress, but basically this knot represents the ovary. This is our pedicle, um, our vessels are here, the ligament which we would have um, stretched or broken or cut is there at the cranial leading edge and then this bit would have been attached to our uterus okay and we've made a, a window here just as you would have been taught to anyway and uh, we've put one set of clamps on here um, usually I put several clamps on there I only have one set at home so we're just gonna have to go with that for now um, I use Vicrol I find it, it works really well for this but whatever you use um, I don't usually use anything off the reel, so um, there will be one end with a needle. The end with the needle I tend to keep away from the pedicle to start with, and it's the free end um, that I used to tie the knot, okay? So I go diagonally across my hemostats like this to start with, and I always make sure the hemostats have the tips free, and you'll see why that's useful in a second. Um, so that free end goes through the window we've created, and out the other side, on the ovary side of those hemostats. Okay, there we go. Then it crosses across, okay, forms of an X, and then it goes under the hemostats and right through the same fenestration that you've got. Then it comes across on the opposite side, so on the other side of the hemostats there, and this is the key bit, it's got to nip in front of the needle edge, okay? So it's gone across, done that knot, come out in front and then flipped like that. And that's when with your needle holders, you'll go in straight through this cross like this, parallel to your hemostats. You can see the hemostats just underneath and you're just going through like that with your needle holders. And with those, you're gonna grab that trailing edge and pull it through. And that's your constrictor knot. Now, before you start tightening this, because it is a self-tightening knot, you definitely don't want to tighten anything before you've checked that um, you don't have any, any tissue um, that's unwanted within those throws. So at this point, I tend to remove the clamp and just check. Pull, pull those encircling loops closer together, check there's no fat or any alba anywhere near, and once I'm happy, I will simply constrict. And you can see how comfortably and effectively that, that actually constricts. And actually, it, it's almost impossible to loosen now without loosening single throws. It's really tight. And then just as normal, uh, with your um, needle holders, you will then tie some more throws on top, just as you would ordinarily, like that, and so on. I usually do about four, four throws on top. Okay, well, that's a really nice knot. I still put two on, just for peace of mind, um, but really, I don't think I'd lose sleep over one because they are so secure. Um, I hope that's helpful. Bye.